Hi, everyone. I'm Chris Hines, Product Marketing Manager here at Docker, and I'm joined with a special guest, uh, Mano Marks, who's our Director of Developer Relations. So, Mano, thanks for being here, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, today what we're going to do is talk about um, this awesome thing that Mano and the community um, built out. It's, uh, it's called Containerized Windows Workloads with something called Image to Docker. Uh, so before we kick things off, I just wanted to remind you all that this presentation is being recorded. So what we'll do is we'll follow up with you later on this week with the full recording of this presentation, and you can share it with anyone that you would like. Also, towards the end of this presentation, we'll save some time for questions and answers. Uh, you might have noticed that here within WebEx, you have a, a small little portal that says Q&A. You can post questions throughout the presentation, but we'll address them towards the end after we've uh, concluded the presentation and the actual demo itself. Um, so before I pass it over to Mano, I just wanted to you know, explain a little more context, right? So um, a couple of weeks ago, we announced our commercial partnership with uh, with Microsoft, and so uh, we're official partners with the company. Um, so anyone who is a Windows Server 2016 customer will have access to uh, our Docker engine uh, at no additional cost. Right? So this image here is just kind of a breakdown at a high level of what that relationship looks like and what it entails. Um, so you have our Docker platform here. Uh, obviously, you know, we talk about the, the flexibility of the platform itself to be able to run an AD environment, whether that be physical, virtual, or cloud. Um, any OS, right? Now with this partnership with Microsoft, we support Windows Server 2016. All right, so as you can see in the uh, doc, the diagram here, you have um, the engine that overlays on or um, deploys directly on that OS, and you have the ability to run any application on top of that engine as well. Right, so we have this full kind of end-to-end -end platform built for both developers as well as IT operations teams. So uh, with that quick overview taking place, let me pass the ball over to Mano Marks. And Mano, you will be able to share your screen and show a demo of Image to Docker. All right. Now, um, I uh, just wanted to give a little bit of context, too, uh, while uh, I get used to this and try and figure out how to share my screen. <laughs> um, so part of, one of the contexts is that a lot of people have um, have a lot of their infrastructure already built out and built out into virtual machines. And what we um, wanted to do, uh, along with our community members, was to develop a way in which people could easily port over their uh, their existing virtual images to um, to Docker using the new uh, Windows containers. We were very excited about uh, the new Windows containers when uh, when they came out. And obviously we uh, we worked closely with Microsoft to make sure that we could be we could be ready for that and we could help them in the development. So, um, a, we have a program called Docker Captains, which are much like the Microsoft MVP program, the people who are in the community who are identified as, um, as uh, people who can represent uh, Docker. They don't work, work for us. Um, and they often work on really cool tools, building out things that, uh, that we don't have time for <laughs> uh, or that can be useful to other people in the community. And uh, one of our Docker captains, uh, Trevor Sullivan, created a, um, a PowerShell uh, tool, PowerShell module called Image to Docker. What Image to Docker does is it uh, inspects a, um, a VHD, VHDX, or WIM file, uh, <coughs> mounts it, and then inspects it for the particular artifacts that you're looking for. Now, I should um, caution you right now, it's, uh, it's a community-developed tool, it's open source, uh, so you can adopt it yourself, and it's still in uh, development. There's a few, there's some rough edges. Um, I was playing around with the IS stuff earlier, and so that's not quite working exactly as I want it to. But um, what you get here is um, when you import this tool, you can run it against a, um, a uh, VHD, VHDX, WIM file, and you get an output, which is a Docker file, which you can then use to build your application. So um, I'm going to do a quick little demo to show you how it works. Uh, 
first you want to um, import the module. So Is this all showing up on the yeah. screen? I have your terminal open. Are you in terminal? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Import module image to Docker. It's already installed, so it worked really fairly quickly. And then I'm going to. One second. I think for some reason it's frozen on your terminal itself. Okay. So let's see if we can go back to your. Um, the main WebEx page, and it is a different way we can share it that will work. This will be a WebEx tab. You can hit stop sharing. Just for a second. Okay, let's see what those options are. Okay. Share screen, more options, uh, Windows, PowerShell. Thanks for bearing with us, everyone. If this goes through. By the way, if anybody can invent a um, <laughs> PC uh, video conferencing application that works really well and seamlessly, I would really appreciate it. And um, <laughs> you could probably make a lot of money. <laughs> okay. Uh, if what is showing? Nothing at the moment. Nothing at the moment. Mm -hmm. Now it's not giving me. Can you do you need to pass the ball back to me? Let's see. Back to you. Okay. There we go. We have movement. Now let's see. All right. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run this, bot, this uh, module. And what you see is there's a path. That's a path to my VHDX file. Um, there's a artifact. There's artifacts that are specified. So these are the things that I'm looking for on the VHDX file. And I'll, uh, I'll point you to a few more things on, on that in a little bit. I've uh, created an output path, which is uh, 2012, because this is a 2012 uh, um, file, uh, uh, sorry, 2012 image, and I put it into both modes so you can see a little bit more of what happens. And then I just start running it, and you can see it's giving me a little bit of output. Basically what it does is it mounts the, uh, the file, and then it looks through uh, everything that, looks for everything that I've told it to, and then it unmounts the file. And now you can see we now have a uh, 2012 directory, um, and you see there are three files in here now, um, the, and let me show you the Docker file that it created. Um, so you see in here there's a bunch of things that it looked, for, it looked at. These are just um, things that it was looking at to see what was there, and it's all commented in there. So this would allow you the, to know what's on the, the machine and put it in later. Um, and then um, you'll see there's nothing with Apache, which was in the original request. So we can inspect sorry, the, di the different files. So we can say more add remove programs, and it shows these are all the programs that it detected. And then I can look at more Apache, and it shows that it's actually absent because I wasn't actually on the file. That's not all that exciting, but you can see that it, it, it does do uh, some creation. Now I'm going to run the command again, but I'm going to have it look for uh, IIS. And it's scanning through and looking for uh, for IIS. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to copy the files that are uh, in different websites. So we can now go into 2012, and you can see there's now actually two directories and uh, a Docker file and an IIS file. 
So I'm going to show you the, the IIS file. It shows you the different uh, websites and um, the physical paths to them. And if I show you the Docker file, you'll see that it actually runs PowerShell and then um, adds the different features that it needs to and uh, creates some new websites, uh, two new websites, one default web and one mano site. Now, one of the things that I noticed is I've used an apostrophe in the name, and that will actually cause an error. <laughs> so, um, so it's not running quite the way I want to, and there's a few extra commands I want to in there. But you can see here it will actually, if you run it, add in the actual files into the Docker container uh, into the, uh, the correct routes. So um, that's a, it's, a, it's a pretty fun tool. Uh, and it's really good for prototyping based on your existing infrastructure. So this is uh, where we have it. It's at uh, uh, GitHub Docker Community Tools. Uh, Community Tools image to Docker with the long URL, but that's, uh, that's where that is. Oh, I'm, I, I need to switch, I think, over to sharing my uh, general desktop. What we'll do is we'll add the link to the, uh, the GitHub repo in the follow-up to this as well, so you can take a look at it. Okay, you are not seeing my screen yet. Here we go. Oh, okay. So uh, this is just a reminder, this is the PowerShell uh, gallery that exists, that's run by Microsoft, and then we created an account and uploaded it there. And then this is the uh, GitHub repository the community tools image to Docker win in our um, our Docker uh, repo. And then how it works is it looks through, when you run the command, you can either specify the artifacts that you're looking for or it will identify all the artifacts. And the artifacts are in this directory. Each artifact, um, and we have now seven different artifacts, but each artifact will have uh, two files, a discover, which discovers all the components that you need, and a generate, which is what adds to the Docker file. So I'm not gonna go into this in particularly in depth right now, but this makes it really easy to add your own uh, discovery items. All you need to do is, uh, uh, down, is uh, you know, clone the code and then add another directory and two new, two new files to the artifacts directory and, uh, and you can get going. So you can have your own, you can contribute it back to the community, uh, and anything that you want. So as we said, this, is, uh, this was initially created by uh, Trevor Sullivan. I've added some to it. We're um, requesting people to add more. We really are excited for people to add more. Uh, tools to this, more discovery artifacts, and help us uh, make it even better. So um, that's, uh, that I think is it. Cool. Thank you. So I guess one point is, um, is there a way for folks in the audience to get involved? Is this? Right. All you need to do is uh, close the repository, um, submit issues that you come up with, and then submit a pull request to uh, the uh, to the repository. and. Uh, I will be evaluating it. Other people here at Docker will be evaluating it and merging in pull requests. And of course, you can use it. Uh, you can fork it, create your own, um, and uh, and create your own uh, artifact. So, awesome. So at this point, um, I'd love to open up the floor to any questions from the audience. Um, as I mentioned before, this presentation is recorded. I see a few folks may have been having some audio issues, so um, no worries. Uh, we appreciate you being here and joining, but we'll definitely follow it with the uh, full recording so you can actually go ahead and, and give it a listen and, and um, check it out yourself or share it with anyone that you'd like. But so I know a few questions have come in now. Um, there's one question around, are there any plans for VMDK support? Again, I'm not sure. If um, yeah, so currently we, uh, we we would love to have VMDK support, and that's actually an issue that's open. Um, Microsoft uh, has a tool that you can download, and I um, just search for Microsoft uh, VMDK to uh, VHD 
converter, and you can convert that, and then it produces a, a, a VHDX file, and you can uh, you can use that in, uh, instead. We'd like to incorporate that into it. I played around with it a little bit, but it requires detecting whether the, the tool is active and, and doing a few other things. So um, I, it would be great to have it in here, and we just didn't uh, uh, don't have it in yet. Got it. Um, I know there's a question around kind of what kinds of apps can you containerize on the Windows side. Um, one question was, could you use this to containerize something as complex as Exchange, for instance? Um, yeah, so uh, I don't think we, uh, Microsoft has released Exchange support um, uh, yet, but if you go to uh, Docker Hub, and look at Microsoft, you can see that there's a whole bunch of base images that they've already created, uh, which includes things like uh, SQL Server. So there's already a SQL Server uh, sample, there's ASP.NET samples, um, uh, not samples, base images. Um, so here, uh, there's also C SQL, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Ruby, MongoDB, a bunch of other open source projects as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, you see here there's uh, Microsoft uh, SQL Server 2016 Express already built in. And they have, I believe, different uh, versions. So Microsoft has two different base images. One is Nano Server and one is Windows Server Core. Windows Server Core is a much bigger file, a much bigger base image, but it has a lot more of the of Windows in it, whereas Nano Server is really cutting uh, Windows uh, Windows down. It's more performant, but it's um, it doesn't have some of the the base stuff um, for uh, that you might expect. So uh, they're working on it. They're always improving these. Uh, they have some um, uh, repositories on GitHub to help make these things better. So you can always contribute there as well. I'm sure that Exchange is one of these things that many people are looking for, and uh, hopefully somebody on the Microsoft side is working on. Phenomenal. Um, there's a question here from Matt, and I can take this one. Um, is this tool fully supported by the commercial support model? Um, so no, this isn't. This is separate from Docker Data Center, which is, um, I believe, what you're asking about. So Docker Data Center is our commercial solution, which um, we offer as a, a subscription. Um, Image to Docker is a tool that can help you containerize your Windows workloads and help you start leveraging Docker containers within um, your organization today. All right, so two separate things, um, just to clarify there. Yeah, this is a this is an open source tool, community driven. We um, we we don't uh, support those uh, kind of tools as part of our official support, but there are people looking at it and um, and uh, making it better. Awesome, and there's a bunch of questions coming in now. Um, so just kind of looking through some of these. Um, Can you containerize legacy Windows applications, for example, something like Access? Um, if so, what needs to be part of the container? So um, yeah, I think we'll prob they'll probably get a lot of these, and uh, that most of those because they um, they involve uh, Microsoft tech and Microsoft intellectual property will have to be um, uh, will have to be used. Uh, will have to be done by Microsoft. So uh, if, I, if they want to um, do Access, they'll have to do that themselves. So Access also has this uh, visual component to it, not just the back-end database. And uh, uh, Windows containers don't yet support a full, uh, don't support a, uh, a visual uh, component to it, I believe. So uh, you wouldn't see that. Good question here around uh, with on Windows 2016, is image to Docker, does image to Docker still work because it's no longer using VirtualBox? Yeah, image to Docker does not use VirtualBox. Image to Docker uses native um, Microsoft uh, tools and does not require uh, does not require VirtualBox at all. In fact, VirtualBox does not work when you have um, Hyper-V enabled, and uh, it's basically all it's doing, it's running on your local machine, it's not running in a container, although somebody can certainly get a container to run that way. Um, it just pulls up the, uh, the image, mounts it as a disk, performs the discovery operations, and then dismounts it. 
Yeah, okay. We got a question around, would we be able to run image Docker on another OS such as the Linux operation? Well, this is, it's really, this tool is particularly um, focused on Windows uh, machines and Windows containers. Uh, theoretically, since it's in PowerShell, it would run in um, PowerShell on other, uh, other platforms. A lot of the support uh, things that would be required would not be there. So you um, probably, I'm, I'm not sure which pieces would, would or not, would or would not work. So uh, yeah, I mean that would that would be something that ideally we would like, but it's not available at the moment. In terms of licensing, would you know if there are any? Are there any licensing implications for containerizing Microsoft-based applications? Um, there aren't because it doesn't actually uh, containerize the applications. It uh, it looks for applications that are installed, and uh, if they are, it uh, it finds their account, basically it's building it up again in Windows. And since it's based on a Windows core, a Windows Server core base image, it will, uh, it will be running, um, you know, Microsoft has licensed that as, uh, as a capability. Those only run on Windows. Um, it doesn't actually find an existing application and port it over. It only ports over files and settings. So a question we got from Aim was, how about Windows services? Does that have the ability to pick them out? Um, currently, the only discovery artifacts are, it looks for add remove programs so that you can add them later yourself. Apache, which is a common one, uh, DHCP server, DNS server, IIS, MSMQ, and SQL server. So those are the only ones that it's, um, it's currently looking for. Uh, if you can do a uh, discovery on Windows services from PowerShell, then it can find those uh, the settings that you need and port them over as well. But that would require additional discovery artifacts. The um, question we got was, um, do you find Windows containers larger when compared to Linux when built? I think that really depends on the application itself. Yeah, it depends on the application itself, but the base images themselves are definitely larger at this point. I know that Microsoft's working on making Nano Server smaller, but the, currently it's around, I think, 360 megabytes. And the Windows Server Core is around um, 8 gigabytes, I think. So they are large images. Um, the nice thing is once, of course, you've downloaded that, those base images, to a particular host, then they uh, they are already there, and you can just run with them. But yeah, you have to be uh, you have to know that um, that that's uh, that's an issue. Um, there's a question here from Rami or Rami. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but it's is it possible to run Docker Swarm using Hyper-V on Windows Server 2015? Interesting. Um, you can you can run uh, Docker Swarm on Windows Server uh, 2016. Uh, definitely, um, I'm not sure it doesn't because the Windows containers are run natively. Um, they don't require. Um, I, I guess they are running with uh, with Hyper-V. I'm not sure the exact way that Microsoft has implemented that, but. Um, you can, I believe, uh, Hyper-V is, is also installed on Windows Server 2016, so you could, you should be able to run it uh, that way as well. Yeah, I mean, because the way I say it, as long as you have the Docker engine installed on the OS, you can use Swarm. Yeah, right? you, use, uh, you would use Swarm mode. Um, you would have, to, if you were using the older um, swarm, classic Swarm, mm -hmm. uh, you would have to install that separately. Correct. Um, so we got a question from Jason. Any idea when the Docker for Windows will support Windows containers from the stable channel? Um, that's a good question, and I'm not sure uh, when it will happen, but I know they're working on it. Really, uh, that's a that's a big priority. Um, looking through these now, I think we're getting towards the end of the questions that have come in. Um, for the most part. What is that? How is that? Okay. 
Question regarding mounting a host network for share inside Windows container. Is it supported in Docker? For instance, say my Windows host access on a network drive is mounted. Uh, um, you know, I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I think it's probably not because I, I think we're still working on some of the, uh, the networking pieces. Uh, Microsoft is working on that, uh, uh, on that kind of access. So yeah, I think this is not a um, uh, not possible at the moment, um, but uh, uh, definitely something that we we would want to work for, work towards. Um, the solution to mount to install Docker on AIX. Um, I I don't we we don't have an official one, um, but people may have ported it over, much like they did with the um, Raspberry Pi and ARM uh, um, bases, in which we've now uh, started putting into the uh, to the main Docker, so um, the, the mainline Docker support. So uh, search around, but there's nothing that's officially supported, I think, yet by uh, by Docker. Okay. Um, let's see if some more come in towards the bottom. In a mixed cluster swarm, is there a filter that causes containers to go to the correct host type, or is it manual for now? I believe you can use a filter uh, on the, the – you, you would probably have to put a label on the uh, – on them at the, and then, uh, and then uh, filter. Yeah, I think at the registry yeah. level. You would, yeah, you'd have to filter. You have to in your when you deploy, you'd have to say only deploy to uh, to Linux tagged uh, machines. But uh, there isn't a way currently to to say, oh, I'm I've got say a Node.js image, and if I'm deploying on a node on a on a host, it checks what host type it is, and then and then. Uh, Decides which container to to deploy as a result, uh, which image to deploy as a result. Um, that is a really cool idea, and I think uh, you know if you wanted to help contribute to that, uh, looking at the uh, GitHub Docker repo, Docker Docker would be the place to look. Um, we got a question around what are some of the open source tools that we have at Docker uh, that we could use along with Microsoft Windows containers. Um, I, you know, any uh, any tool that works with Docker will work with Windows containers, and anything that you can install on Windows will work inside a Windows container, um, uh, with the exception, I think, of, uh, of GUI-based applications. But if you're looking at uh, server-based applications, um, anything. And Microsoft's got a number of examples of Node and Ruby and all the others, other kinds of things. Um, we got some advice in terms of what a cool addition would be to this tool. So uh, a useful addition would be um, the networking side of things. So, so you could interrogate the local firewall and recreate the rules in your Docker file. Does this sound feasible? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This, I mean, this, this tool, assuming you're talking about the uh, uh, within the uh, the VHD, um, that would be really easy to do. Uh, and then from PowerShell, you could I, I believe in PowerShell, there's ways you can interrogate the, the firewall and find out what all the rules are and then simply write them into your Docker file uh, when you're creating it. Yeah, that's uh, that should be um, relatively easy and it would be a great discovery artifact to add to the uh, to the community tools. Please do. Okay, so for MS SQL Server container, is DB file located within the container or externalized? Um, you can load a SQL Server within the container. Uh, currently, what it's doing is it's just looking for SQL Server and uh, and then making sure it's installed if you uh, if you have it. It does not copying over the data file in the discovery object, but that should be something that would be relatively simple to. Uh, to do. Question from David. Uh, does the tool install all the rules, features that are in the reference machine or just the ones necessary to run the IIS app? 
Um, it currently uh, just installs them based on um, an administrator. Uh, we the IS stuff is still a little bit in um, in flux, but we are working on that uh, that piece of it as well, and would love the contribution. So the different roles aren't uh, aren't fleshed out currently. That's not something we've focused on uh, too much. So the tool is open source now, um, but are there plans to pull it in-house and officially support it at some point in the future? Um, we don't have any plans on it. It's, it's pretty new, and we would never um, we would never remove it from open source. It's out there. It's open source. It's not something that's going to go away. Um, I think you know if we were going to do something in-house, we would probably do something a bit more comprehensive and. Uh, um, possibly build on top of it, but no plans to do so at the moment. Okay. There's a couple more here. Um, Is there a way to containerize Windows Task Scheduler workloads? I don't know enough about Task Scheduler, but I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I, I would guess that that it would be, that would be the case, um, I, but you have to investigate it a bit more. A uh, question here from name is, so I guess this tool is the starting point. Um, yes. You run this and then edit your Docker file further as per your request. That's right. This is a, a tool really designed to give you a good proof of concept um, uh, for porting over common applications, uh, application types. Um, it's, uh, you know, you could, if you have only a few images, you could probably use it and tweak it to to run directly into pushing stuff into production. But yes, we do recommend you examine the Docker file, make sure it's giving you what you need, and uh, and then push it uh, further, build it out further to uh, to more customize what you're working on. Um, we got a question around, is there a book around Docker for Windows Server 2016? Not that I know of now, but I know that here at Docker, and we're working closely with Microsoft to build out more content um, to help educate y'all on um, what's going on and the value of Docker for Windows Server 2016 for you. And if you go into, um, there's a uh, github.com Docker Labs, there's a, uh, there are some uh, tutorials on Windows containers that you can do. And of course, Microsoft has a bunch of content on their sites as well. So we have our own sort of basic tutorial out there and you're, you know, welcome to use that, contribute to it, uh, come back. This is, uh, Docker Labs is a great place to find um, quick, both community and Docker sourced content to, uh, to help you get started on projects. And specifically this Windows piece. Okay, I think we pretty much got through, I'd say yeah. 95, 99% of these. Um, so I just want to thank everyone to the audience for being here and uh, listening in and learning about Image Docker. I want to thank Mano for um, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. The overview and the demo, we appreciate that. And again, I, there's a bunch more questions around. You know, is this was this recorded? So yes, this was recorded. And uh, we'll follow up with you later on this week uh, to send you the recording and a quick little um, summary. And then, um, and we look forward to having you join our future webinars. If you do have any questions. Um, our contact info, I can share that real quick to see if you have it. Let's see. And you can always reach out to us on Twitter. I know Matt is a bit of a rock star on Twitter here. Um, <laughs> if you want to fi find me on any social platform, I'm Mano <laughs> Marks. I'm the only one, I think, out there. So. Here's our contact information. All right, everyone, we appreciate it. Have a great morning or afternoon or night. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone.